Hello everyone, this is Noemi Banki and we are broadcasting from Valley Heights in New South Wales, very close to Sydney and in Australia, of course. <laughs> well, today we are going to talk about Avatar. And well, first of all, I want to explain that all this information is actually the, the, it is in two books. One is Unveiled Mysteries by Guy Ballard, and the second on the right hand side is uh, Visible Saint Germain by Ruben Cedeno. The only thing is that the um, second, the later, is in Spanish. But there is some um, comments or explanations about the um, and the the book by Guy Ballard. So that we are going to combine in this activity. So Ruben Cedeno says, "Avatar means descent or an awakened." a wicked Christ embodiment who physically lives on earth to communicate and manifest the inner teaching, the supreme being's aspects and principles, or God, and saved from ignorance caused by evil. Okay, but let's Let's explain all this because there is a lot, a lot of information in this. So first of all, the word avatar means descent. And this is why um, there are some um, beings who were born with the goal to teach or maybe not teach because nowadays in pedagogy we don't use the word teach anymore you know why because science or studies real by by studying people realize that we don't really teach anything it's just people that who learn and they learn what they want. And so that is the way that an avatar is a being who decided to come to communicate. To communicate what? The inner teaching. So inner teaching, just to understand inner, what does it mean? Inner means in within so it's an something about yourself is within you so it's internal in in an old vocabulary we will say um, religion or spiritual but nowadays that word is misunderstood so we want to oh and Ruben Cedeno actually took that word instead of spiritual we want to say inner so instead of spiritual teaching we we say inner teaching and the supreme beings aspects and principles well you can heard the word God and what do you think? Well, some people think of a elderly person sitting on a cloud with long beard, gray hair, very strong and just punishing people or just sitting there, maybe, as, as, as a picture. But the truth is, God is not that. That is just the imagination of some artist. God is, or the word God, first of all, God is a word. 
like Allah. And we can say different words um, like Ishura or different languages if you want to. But the, the main thing is that realize that just God is a word. And that word, well, means many things. Because what you think of God, that is God for you. So if you think that God is... Um, I, w I wish I could ask you, what do you think? What do you think of God? Or what do you think God is? And, well, the aspects of the Supreme Being are seven. Just to mention goodwill, intelligence, include inclusion, love, but love again is a word is a word that is misused, so in inclusion is, is another word. Then ascension, health prosperity or peace ceremonial order well all those are aspects of the supreme being and what are the principles well principles are seven um, they are the seven universal principles that not only up they apply in, on earth but in the whole universe such as well, such as mentalism, what you think and you feel, you manifest. And not just that, it's what you say and what you do as well, you manifest. Well, uh, cause and effect, cause and effect is what you do, that is returned to you, like a boomerang. And vibration everything vibrates so we when we talk about colors and how you are dressed well we look at uh, today is Monday so we choose to wear something mm, yellow in terms of colors golden uh, in terms of light and and then that is also part of vibration I I like to say to people who wear black clothes that black is not a color. And actually, studies say that the color black, or black actually, which is not a color, is related to depression. People get depressed and they choose black. Don't ask me why, just tell you, vibration. Then mm, the, other, the other principle is, well, uh, apart from vibration, uh, the other one is rhythm. Everything has a rhythm. Everything comes and goes. And if you realize that nothing is permanent, well, then when you don't have that thing anymore, well, you don't you don't suffer as much as as much as if you are attached to that thing or that person. Uh, I think one of the attachments uh, to things like clothes, houses, cars, building cities, I don't know, etc. Um, they are, they could be very, um, uh, what is the word? People can suffer for that, for that, for that attachment. And this is what, uh, Lord Gautama teaches as the first, uh, truth. The first noble truth is suffering. Suffering is six. Well, and then when they realize, and we are, oh my God, <laughs> we went from Sunderman's teaching to Gautama's teaching. And to be honest, 
is they are not different. They maybe are the the words that they use are different uh, because it's different times, different uh, styles. But at the end of the day, they talk. They are on the same page, and. We were talking about by uh, rhythm, so that everything comes and goes. But what about the attachment uh, to um, uh, people? That is very really strong, and th that is one of the most uh, painful, painful um, circumstances where someone they lost. And I say you are not losing anybody because you don't have them. Is not a piece of furniture that you have. No, it was your friend, it was your partner, uh, maybe she was your mom or someone like you, a loved one. But it's not your belonging. So you you don't you cannot say that you lost them. Well, that is that's one of the things. Uh, plus mental attachments. That someone has an idea and they defend that idea and and we come to the first law that what you think and you believe you manifest well in that aspect we also need to work um, to be open-minded and and this brings me to the to the quadrant of causation by Ruben Zedenio who says that what you think what you feel what you say and what you do determine your life in other words if you think positively you feel positively you have good feelings you speak positively and you do positive things constructive things then your life will be good and full of joy and happiness on the other hand if you have negative thoughts, if you have bad feelings um, of anger, uh, sadness, depression, um, etc., etc., then you, and plus you say those words related to those emotions, plus you do things that can harm someone else, well, in that case, that is the cause of suffering that is your 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 life will be miserable but not because of god's um will or someone's will or someone to blame it's just because you the way that you use your powers because at the end of the day you have free will to choose what you want well talking about that we say the other principle and see how God, the word God, can is completely, completely um, comprehensive, and can yeah can mean different things. Well, and the other principle is generation and and polarity. That everything has two poles, positive, negative, black, white, happiness, suffering, uh, up and down, inside, outside, all these things. And the, the other principle is generation that you, we generate. So when two poles connect, they, they produce generation, uh, like light. And the last one is correspondence, which is how, as it is above, it is below, and as it is below, it is above. So, well, when we talk about God, and you, in a nutshell, you see, oh, well, the supreme being's aspects and principles, well, it can take days, years, all your incarnation to understand and to realize all these things about God without 
taking into consideration that we said supreme beings aspects we are talking about God is also the being and the being when you are talking about yourself you are a human being which is you are God not like a tiny God who can do whatever you want is that you are part of a the creation so you you are part of this world so that is the supreme being so we have the supreme being and the inner inner being we call inner self well once you understand all and this is someone came to explain all this to save people from ignorance And I heard people saying, ignorance is a bless. And I want to shout. I really, I want to scream. I said, no. And I say, no, for me, no. I don't accept it. Ignorance is never a bless. Because imagine that you have sex with someone with um, HIV. It's not a blessing. You want to know that the other person is healthy. I guess I want to know, at least. So, always knowledge is better than ignorance. And that is the key to free, set you free from ignorance. Knowledge. Being aware. These kind of things. So, Sandra Mon is the avatar for this new anthropocentric age for the next 2000 years and is in charge of revealing the interiority that the current humanity needs Whoa, okay let's talk about this what we are talking about new age that in the in the in between there is an, another word anthropocentric well do you know what is what is it do you know what it is well anthropocentric and the Cambridge dictionary says considering humans and their existence as the most important and central fact in the universe in other words in these times what matters is what you think, what you feel, what you say, and what you do. And this is the center. And for that reason, when you go to a doctor or in medicine, is patient-centered. And if we go to education, for example, is student-centered. So everything is, the human being is the center. Um now the pedagogy to learn, because we are not talking anymore about teaching, we are talking about learning. Um, well, we, uh, we take as center the, the human being, the same as metaphysics. So when we go come back, we say that Saint Germain is the avatar, the current avatar. And he's going to stay in that chart for 2,000 years. So, well, what, what we say that an avatar is a being that comes to communicate. Well, where is he? Where, where can we have a meeting with him? Well, hang on, please. He's in charge of, re of revealing the interiority. And again, when we say interiority, remember when we say inner, um, we talk about inner teaching, we are talking interiority. We are talking, in other words, of spirituality, what we used to talk, we, we used to um, say as interiority means spiritual. 
spiritual but we don't want to use that word because spiritual can be you know challenging challenging or tarots or feng shui or many things that not really is related to eternity that for that for the people who are on earth you you are incarnated so you, that is for you what you need you need money okay how to be prosper pros, prosperous you need to heal from any condition lower back pain or whatever okay so how to produce health um peace you want to forgive you need to forgive something someone yourself well all these things that you need at this time at this at this stage well if Sunderman here is on on the right hand side is Sunderman. Who is with Sunderman? Sunderman is the current avatar. Who was the previous? The former avatar was Jesus, Master Jesus. So, as you see, this picture is the representation of both of them, um, the former and the current avatar, and they are in a very good friendship. They they have they continue with the work of each other so it's like okay we are in the new age and we are not going to throw to the rubbish bin everything that uh, jesus taught no on the contrary we learn that and what we do now is from there we go to the second step it's like a stair with we when you have a flight of steps well you just go um one step at a time you don't jump from one to the number 10 because you don't want to go for number one. No, you go one, two, three, four, five until uh, the last one. So in terms of that, we have this as the representation of the zodiac sign. So on one side, like um, when Master Jesus was the avatar, well, at that time was the um pisces age now the new age is aquarius so we are in aquarius and for that reason sonderman is known as um, avatar aquarius mm -hmm. that's right so let's analyze or let's observe maybe is the best word to say let's observe these two pictures Okay, what do you see? Okay, we see yes, fish on, on Pisces, of course, two. And we also see in Aquarius a person. And well, that person is also with, so the, the fish, of course, is in water. Uh, so everything related to water is emotion and Aquarius is is a person is a human being and that person is controlling that water. It's not everything is water completely it's just controlling is is uh, pouring uh, let's say in a safe manner or controlled manner that that water so what else we see? Well, um, let's analyze some uh, difference between the previous age and the new age, which is anthropocentric. Anthropocentric. You might learn a new word today. Pisces was a negative age. Aquarius is a positive one. Um... Mm, yes, Pisces was mm, the masculine pole of the earth was activated and that is in the Himalaya um, mountain in India part of India whereas uh, Aquarius in this time the feminine pole is more activated and where is it? well it is in Peru in the 
Titicaca mm, mm, Lake. Well, there is, and look, we can say this, but you can see with your own eyes, with your own eyes, that nowadays women have more roles in society as prime ministers or presidents or chancellor. Um, they, they have their own place. Um, they have a voice, they, they are independent, they have their jobs and they work, um, sometimes equally, sometimes more than men, but this is uh, because of the feminine uh, activation. Um, plus, there are more women than men on earth, incarnated. So, that is the age. Another thing is, well, like we say in the, in the picture, water. When you see water, means emotions. And Pisces was all over the place, was very strong, strong, strong emotions. Everything was so, you know, emphasized about emotions. And Pisces, Aquarius, on the other hand, is air. So Aquarius is a, um, a zodiac sign of, of er, air, which is related to the thought, but in a good way. So we need to l learn how to control our thoughts because it's not like you're going to think whatever you want. So you want to control, you want to be, and this is the first, the first um, objective in metaphysics is positive thinking. Gautama's teaching is um, right thing, thought. Is everything related to thinking? So the way we, the way that we think. And the um, Pisces, let's say, goal was worship, love. So Jesus teaching, one of its Jesus' teaching was love each other. So worship. So for that reason, so many religions, so many, no religion, but so many, um, so the worship is, or oh, it was really emphasized in Jesus' uh, or Pisces era, uh, age, sorry. Whereas Aquarius, we don't really need to work on worship because we already did, supposedly, but we need to work uh, on freedom. And not so much about the physical freedom, because nowadays um, the vast majority of the countries are free. Uh, it's more about emotional freedom, more about emo um, mental freedom, this kind of freedom. And, well, the new inner teaching revealed by Sondramon and the spiritual hierarchy and applied in metaphysics is unprecedented. It is not based on any known religion or philosophy. It is something new. If we study a little bit of history, we will remember that Master Jesus was... So he came from a tree he was born, he had a mom, a dad, and he was born in Bethlehem. Yeah, I know the, the things that happened well. But at the same time, he was born into a religion, which was Jewish. Yeah, he was Jewish. 
the same as Joseph and Mary, all of them. And Joseph was also part of the um, um, the esoteric group, if we can say, of that uh, time. They were... Um, I just forgot the word. Uh, okay, if I remember, I would say uh, the word. Well, anyway, the thing is that they were... Jesus was born into Jewy, as a Jew. But then that Christianity thing was created and nowadays you can see Catholicism that was created after Jesus. Well, nowadays we are in front of something unprecedented. This teaching, Saint Germain's teaching, is unprecedented. And this is what we learn here in metaphysics. Metaphysics is the, the cutting edge in terms of um, philosophy, because it's a philosophy of life, in terms of religion. So when we talk uh, with Buddhist, I went the other day, there was a um, uh, celebration in near Barangaroo in Sydney and there was a celebration for um, Buddha's birthday so they were talking about the the Buddha's life and really really like the way that they explained like for a kid almost like history for, for a kid that how he was born and then what happened in the palace and when he met um, a, a person who was ill, and then a person who was old, uh, another person who was dead, and then finally he met an ascetic person, and then he said, okay, but why this person is so happy? I want to be like him. So he decided to renounce to everything in the palace. He was a prince, a like prince of Kabilas too. So finally he... Uh, practice but he he didn't do the correct practice he almost died of starvation then he um, went to Bodhi uh, Bodhgaja where um, under a tree he spent time there and finally got enlightenment and then he decided to share what he learned from that and that he what he did in the last a uh, year that he spent on earth uh, like almost 40 years something like that well anyway the thing is um and I ah why I'm talking about that now I've I don't know anyway <laughs> so uh, everything is uh, new for the age so in this age ah Yes, sorry. And my point about uh, Buddha's teaching is that we also learn in metaphysics about Buddha's teaching. We learn in metaphysics about Hinduism, about um, Ishra, about um, Shiva, Vishnu, Brahma. Um, we, we study the Bhagavad Gita. Um, we study the Vedas. Uh, um, Patanjali is teaching the step of meditation. Then we study all about a dual cool teaching. Um, we learn all about, of course, Saint Germain's uh, teaching. And it's all connected. Ah, uh, also, um, Krishna Murti's teaching. Alice Bailey's teaching, which is part of. Um, um, dual cool well and so on so on so on so but this is something new is not connected with we learn all of that yes of course because that is the foundation but at the same time this is something new and Saint Germain's teaching is in the books and I will introduce you so because just I have here, they, they, I have them. So one is the 
Sacred Book of the I Am. So the Sacred Book of the I Am is in Spanish. So I don't know if you can see it. Oops. Yes. For now is all this teaching of Saint Germain. But also we have the Unveil Mystery and the Magic Presence. All this teaching of Saint Germain. I, by the way, I have the the magic presence in Spanish as well. And that's a very nice story about this one because this book I have in my hands thanks to Ruben Cedeño. Uh, one, I don't remember which year, but one year I went to um, um, Congress, an International Metaphysics Congress in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I met, I was working with the books, there was a few book sh um, bookshops and well, I, I was volunteering there and he came and I said, oh well, thank you for being here, um, please um, choose a book that you like and it's yours. So I choose without even having a clue what was about but I don't know it caught my eye the magic presence and for that reason I have that book so thanks to Rubens Daniel plus I would say um, I don't know if you know but my first language is Spanish eh, Spanish no es Spanish es Español <laughs> Spanish and well of course that I was in contact with this teaching in Spanish. So the books, uh, the sacred book of the I Am, is Sunderman's teaching in Spanish. And in a very well organized um, book, because it's um, with different topics. Whereas Unveiled Mysteries and the Magic Presence is more like a novel. And between the novel is when you can pick up, uh, sometimes within the, between the lines, sometimes explicitly, you can find in the teaching. Well, Sanderman says, in exactly one of these books, the eternal law of life is that whatever you think and feel, you bring into form. You think first and then things change. Where your thought is, there you are. You are your consciousness. So when you see that your body is changing, well remember that you are not your body. You are your consciousness. And when I see successful people, you know, like entrepreneurs or prime ministers, presidents, and I see them and I think, okay, what do they have? Do they have, um, they are tall people. No, not all of them. Or they are fat people or slim people. No, you can see that they are different. They are not the same. They are all black or white or blue eyes no so what do they have that to make to that make them successful and that is the answer that you are your consciousness so whatever you think you will bring into form plus you feel so whatever you think and feel you bring into form because you can say, oh yeah, I want to win the lottery. But if you don't really feel like, or if you don't, you know, play or buy the, the ticket, whatever. Well, how are you going to win? So you are your consciousness. Do not accept anything negative. 
there is only one way of getting rid of something negative. And this is, once you are aware of the mistake to be overcome, you take your attention away from it completely. Okay, taking away your attention is similar to you have no power over me. You say to the thing, you have no power over me. You have, or I take all the power away. That is, wow, that's it. Ooh, thank you very much. And the 1st of May, 2024, it is the coronation, the 70 years of coronation of Saint Germain. So we are going to have an activity, 7 p.m. Sydney time. The Hungarian, the activity is the Hungarian. There will be a congress in uh, International Congress of Metaphysics in Buenos Aires, in Spanish, if you want to. But in English, we are going to have this activity um, to celebrate the seven years of uh, the coronation of Saint Germain as the king of the new anthropocentric age. See you, see you, see you next time. Bye for now.